originally planned for this week's video to be a witchy home and garden tour, but I think the universe had other plans. <laughs> um, for some reason, half of the clips that I have filmed for that video, there's just no audio. It's just non-existent. So I thought I would take a little bit of the pressure off of filming this week and just, just be. <laughs> That's kind of where I'm feeling, um, where I'm at and what I'm feeling. I figured I would just spend the rainy day with you, show you what I do on days like this, and kind of where I've been at lately. Having a little bit of a hard day today. Um, I did not sleep at all. Um, a couple of years ago, I was diagnosed with PTSD and um, high functioning anxiety. And some days it's, it's extra hard. I feel like it's been extra kind of triggered lately. Um, just with some past things resurfacing and I think it's extra hard on the days where I don't sleep. <laughs> here so I am a little bummed I haven't been able to spend as much time in the garden as I want to um, but this gives me an opportunity to kind of focus inward and focus on my home and practice a few little hearth crafting activities today I deep cleaned physically yesterday um, but today I really want to focus on the energy of the space and you know, reset a few things and just make it feel a little more cozy and all around comforting. I feel like I've been in this really deep level of healing as of late and I think that's attributed to a multitude of things, but I have been hit with these like hurdles that I can either walk away from or jump over and it's kind of leaving me questioning myself a little bit. I feel like I've been in a state of uncertainty for a while um, as I kind of heal some things within myself and really step into the person I want to be and how I want to show up. There's this level of like pressure I have felt to live up to a certain standard. Um, and I am like my toughest critic, <laughs> always and forever. Nobody is harder on me than me. There's a lot of things that are attributed to that too, but I feel as though I am in this period of my life where I am reevaluating a lot of things, reevaluating myself, reevaluating these standards that I've set for myself, getting to the root of like why I feel this need to ask permission. And this is a big one. I have felt such this innate desire that like I need to be given permission to show up, to be successful, to hold space. In a sense, I've been dimming my own light because I have adopted this mindset that I'm just undeserving of it. In my heart and in my mind, like I know that's not true, but it's really hard to believe sometimes. And sometimes, I think we spend a lot of time trying to convince people of our worth and what we deserve. And there are times where I feel like no matter what I say, 
and no matter what I do, it's not good enough and it's never going to be good enough to gain that permission. <laughs> and I think that is something I've really had to work on is that I don't need the permission <laughs> to take up space and to be successful and to be loved and I, I can give myself that permission. So two of the main things I knew I really wanted to focus on today were the floors of my home and my reading nook upstairs. I just purchased a new bookcase so I really wanted to get that set up and I feel like the floors in your home are one of the most important places that you can energetically set intentions. I believe we absorb a lot through our feet. My feet are the first thing to be cleansed when I'm cleansing my body. It's a direct line to absorbing energetic intentions. And our feet are always on the ground when we're walking around in public and in our home. If you're really wanting to set a type of intention in a space, I always start with my floors. <laughs> and I do this usually with a simmer pot that I also kind of double as a floor wash. I will let that energetically fill the space and I will save the leftover water to clean my floors and also my doors because I do believe that's where the most energy comes and goes. So setting those intentions at the door is really important, I think, too. I will also utilize a carpet powder or a carpet sweep. I reset my home like 10 times a day with the little one. And I really take this opportunity when she's either napping to kind of take care of all of this stuff and to really just make sure that the home is feeling as comfortable, as cozy, and just supportive as possible. I think our home is our protective barrier from the outside world. It is where so much happens that not everybody sees. It is our safe space. It's an area that we, I think, can be our most comfortable and authentic selves. That's what makes me so passionate about nurturing the home and nurturing the space is because it's where your family resides. It's where you spend the most time, hopefully. You know, I think there's a lot that we can learn from nurturing our home. And I truly believe the more that you care and nurture for your home, the more it nurtures and cares for you. So I'm really wanting to work on this reading nook today. I've got some books put away here. Um, but this kind of top area, which is like more of the display area, I wasn't really sure how to set up. I've had these chairs and tables for a little while. And I've kind of had to maneuver them around to fit this bookcase in here, but this is kind of where we're at so far. So I'm gonna just get this finished up. This space is really important to me. Coming into this house has been such like a blessing. It's giving me this sense of deserving and this level of comfort that I really needed. <laughs> I haven't had a place in such a long time to really call my own and to practice and to just decompress and to spend time and to create. And I found myself in such a slump of, I almost have no in between. I'm either like jazzed and I'm getting this like creative burst and I have all these ideas, but I can't execute them because I don't have the resources or I'm not, it's not the right time. 
and that kind of puts me into a level of stagnancy. I feel like having these spaces again, not that you need a lot of space, but going from not having anywhere to call my own to having even just little parts of this home that I can call my, mine and to feel this level of inspiration again and you know I talked about our last apartment and how awful it was. <laughs> I found myself in a really dark place at that time of feeling just so stuck and feeling like everything that I was trying to pursue and work towards just was falling apart. One of those things actually being a book that I wrote and this is something I've been kind of healing from as of late and I talked to an amazing, amazing creator who just made me feel so inspired and connected again and excited to pursue in my mind when I was told that my book was not going to be published any further. I just felt this level of defeat and hearing that my book like was no longer being published was just the cherry on top of a lot of things that, had, that were happening at the time and I actually recently just passed the date that was supposed to be my publishing date and after talking to this other creator who was just so kind and came out of nowhere <laughs> really um it got me really inspired again to write and to get back into the things that I was passionate about um, before I kind of fell into the slump. With all of these things happening, like you start to kind of internalize it as like, well, maybe I just don't deserve this. And you know, like I said, it felt like nothing was flourishing while we were in that place. After a while, after all of these things just start falling through and you're putting yourself out there 100% and you're putting like, your words and your soul and your heart and so many things that are just crumbling around you and it's completely out of your control. It's really hard to not internalize it as like, oh, well, maybe it's me. Maybe I don't deserve to hold space. Maybe I am not good enough. Maybe I'm not creative enough. Maybe what I put out there isn't quality enough. Reframing that is really where I've been lately. And speaking back on the permission thing, knowing that I don't need anyone's permission to succeed and to pursue what I'm passionate about and my creative endeavors and I don't have to convince myself of who I am because I know who I am and I know what I love and I know what I'm passionate about and I think whether it's permission from other people in the community or permission from a publisher or a permission from a brand who wants to collaborate. I, I don't need that permission to do what I want to do and to be successful. And I think that's something I'm really learning right now. And finding that confidence in myself again to produce and to put things out there that I'm proud of when the book kind of fell through it was in a developmental editing stage. It was almost done. <laughs> it was almost done. And I had like the cover art, the title, everything it was done. It just was being finalized. And unfortunately, it was due to financial reasons that the book was no longer able to move forward. And it was just such a big blow and I think that really put me in a dark place and I've just been trying to pull myself out of this stagnancy and fear-based mindset of I can't do this or it's just gonna fall through it's not gonna work out but I think there's this <laughs> beauty and things not working out and you know I had never in my life thought that anyone would care <laughs> about what I had to say, about my words, or about what I put out there. You know, the collaborations I've had and the people I've worked with and the, the friends I've connected with and the support system and things in my life now that have come from me 
just making the choice to put myself out there. Just think it's an amazing thing. When we put all this effort into things sometimes and we think things are gonna work out a certain way and they don't, I think being able to look at that scenario, especially with the book and see that like I did it, <laughs> I did it. And relishing in that accomplishment, even though nobody may see it, even though I'm not really allowed to share anything about it, that is an accomplishment all in itself. And I'm trying to let that be enough kind of where I've been at lately is reflecting on all of these things that I thought I wanted, these things that didn't work out the way that I had hoped or that I thought they would, and trying to find that inspiration again and continue to put myself out there and continue to be proud of the things that I have achieved and the things that I have done. I'm turning a new leaf now and really moving into a new stage of being unapologetically who I want to be as I share more about my life being a mom and my parenting and just my home life in general. Sharing those things more has been really liberating because I feel like I've been so focused on how I'm supposed to show up or how people are going to receive me and putting my worth in things that just like don't matter. It's really hard for me to like get vulnerable and to talk about these things. I always feel like when I'm talking about where I'm at or what's going on in my life or sharing parts of my life, I feel like it's a burden almost. You know, my husband challenged me recently as I've kind of been rediscovering all these things and why I even started on this journey in the first place. He challenged me to go watch all of my content, all of my older content, and get to the root of why I started this journey and what about it made me love doing what I was doing. I looked at my content then and my content now and it, I seem so stiff all the time. I seem like a robot in my perspective. I feel like a robot. And I feel like watching that journey of when I first started putting myself out there and online, I slowly just got beat down and beat down and beat down into this mold of who I've been as of late. That's due to a lot of things, you know, people telling you who you are, random comments and opinions from people on the internet who think they know you when they only see a blip of your life, failures, and just a whole lot of things that can contribute to who you become. One of my goals this year has really been to break out of that and to try to be more vulnerable and to talk about some of the things that have been weighing on me, such as, you know, losing the book. I've put so much pressure on myself to s continue showing up in the same way when it's not what my life reflects or what I reflect anymore. There is a level of healing that comes with being vulnerable in that way. I'm just shedding a lot of layers and I don't know what that looks like for me moving forward. I really don't. Um, I think it just is going to be a lot more of pursuing what feels right to me, focusing more on long-term things as opposed to just short-term gains and short-term visions. I said I'm not 100% sure what that's going to look like, but I think I'm going to figure it out. my reading book is done. Um, as I said, it's really an, an important space to me. I feel like I am finally at a level of the final layers being stripped off and finding that inspiration again, that creativity, and coming back to myself. I feel like I am in a whole new era <laughs> of Sarah. 
a lot of things that have happened over the years and a lot of things that I am closing the doors on for good and it feels really good. Thank you for spending this rainy day with me and I will see you all in the next one.